Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udzu billahi minasy syaithanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa idza ma unzilat فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ أَيُّكُمْ زَادَتْهُ هَذِهِ إِيمَانًا فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَهُمْ Sadaqallahu'l-Azim 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. May Allah always give us guidance and help. Amin. The following agenda is singing Indonesia Raya. Will be led by Miss Inayatun Nawangsi. The time is yours. Agenda is welcoming speech that will be delivered by Ms. Anissa Dumakrupi, SPDI, MPDI, as the head of Islamic Education Department. Ms. Anissa Dumakrupi, the time is yours. Okay, thank you for the time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruh wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min syai'ati a'malina ma yahdillahu falamudilalah wa ma yudlilhu falahadiyalah amma ba' Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen Thank you to each and every one of you for being here today at this wonderful agenda It is such an honor for me to speak on behalf of the Department Department of Islamic Education, Faculty of Islamic Education Faculty of Islamic Studies, Universitas Muhammadiyah, Yogyakarta. Let me begin by giving you a warm welcome to this international seminar by the theme Sustainability for Quality Education in Indonesia. Before we get started, I would like to express my appreciation to the committee who generously helped us make this seminar come true, Mr. Tumin, Mrs. Nurul, and all of the committee from the staff and students. We could not have done it without you. And thanks for our guest speaker, Dr. Cepi, Dr. Cepi from Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta, and also Professor Hendro Wicaksono from Germany. In today's seminar, we would discuss about sustainability for quality education in pandemic era that will be given by Dr. Cepi. And the second topic is the online learning in digital era, opportunities and challenges by Professor Dr. Hendra Wijaksono. I'm very glad for having you in this seminar. Thanks for joining to this agenda. I hope you enjoy the seminar. Thank you and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda is delivering speech from the speakers. The speakers today are Mr. Dr. Chepi Sakudin Abdul Jabbar MPD and Mr. Professor Dr. Henry Wichaksuna. Now allow me to welcome our speakers for this seminar. Mr. Dr. Chepi Safuddin Abdul Jazar MPD and Mr. Professor Dr. Henry Wichaksuna. The sessions will be led by Dr. Tumin PSG as the moderator of this agenda. Mr. Dr. Tumin PSG, the time is yours. Well, Bismillah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawalah. First of all, I would like to thank you to all of you, so you can join in this uh, international seminar. Uh, my Honorable, the Dean of Faculty of Islamic Studies, Dr. Akif Kilmiah, MAG, and also the head of Islamic Education Department, and may distinguish all the lecturers from Islamic Education Department, and also my beloved uh, students who are joining in this international seminar. It is uh, an honor to me uh, become a moderator for this international seminar. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, for today, I will be the moderator and there are two uh, keynote speakers will be delivering uh, some uh, presentation regarding the theme uh, for today is sustainability for quality education in Indonesia. Uh, before entering to the discussion, I would like to introduce two of our keynote speakers uh, for today. Let me uh, share this some file. Okay. Uh, so uh, for this session will be divided into the two for the first session uh, will be delivered by uh, dr jp safrudin abdul jabbar mpd uh, he is from the yogyakarta, yogyakarta university and the second session will be delivered by professor dr hendra jaksana from uh, jacob university bremen Germany. Okay, from the first session will be delivered by the Dr. J.B. Safruddin Abdul Jabbar, MPD. So this is the profile of him. Uh, regarding the education, uh, Dr. J.B. Safruddin Abdul Jabbar uh, graduated uh, from Institute Keguruan Ilmu Pendidikan Bandung. So on the master degree, he graduated from Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia as well as from the doctoral degree, he passed from Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia Bandung as well. Now he is uh, working as the deputy dean of the Faculty of Education at State University of Yogyakarta. Regarding the publication, uh, actually there are many uh, achievements and also the scholarly publication for him but I also wrote some uh, publication on the five, I think, yeah. The first one regarding the moderation effect of information system and vocational high school. The second one regarding the evaluation of learning services during the COVID-19 pandemic and the extra. Uh, after that, so in the, I mean the time for the delivering the, the presentation uh, around around 30, 35 minutes. Uh, 
Uh, so the time for Dr. Cepi Sabrudin Abdul Jabbar will be given uh, 30, 35 minutes from now. So after that, after two of the keynote speakers delivered the presentation, insyaAllah the question will be open for all the participants. Yeah. As the information for uh, the keynote speakers, uh, the participant uh, come from uh, different participants. One of them is the teachers and also the lecturers and also the uh, student, but most of them are students. Okay, let me uh, uh, give the first session the time for uh, Dr. J.B. Safruddin Abdul Jabbar Embedi to deliver uh, his uh, presentation. Hello, Dr. J.B. Uh, Safruddin. Are you joining us? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to prepare my, my devices. Okay. A little obstacle. Can you share your file from your computer? Okay. Uh, can you see the my my screen? Yes, I can see, Prof. I can okay, see. Okay, thank you, thank you. Can I start now? Yeah, you can start now. Okay, okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, Robi Sori Sodri, Waya Siti Amri, Walul Ubdata Milisan, Yafal Qawli, Amabad. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to be here, joining with you, uh, all of the students, the faculty, and uh, our uh, guest speakers from Germany. Uh, thank you to Mr. Uh, Tumin and uh, Mrs. Nurul Aisa who already invited me to the exciting seminars with an exciting event. Uh, in this uh, moment, I will share uh, about how uh, educational sectors in Indonesia uh, comply with uh, pandemic era. Uh, we know that um, uh, Indonesia first confirmed the COVID-19 case on Monday, uh, actually on March, the second March on 2019, I think. Uh, and at the time, President Jokowi announced that uh, two Indonesians had tested positive for the coronavirus. And uh, the first case is thought to have originated from a meeting of, uh, uh, from a founding of the 30 years old woman with a Japanese citizen who entered Indonesia territory. Uh, and now, uh, as you uh, can see on the media, the addition for a new case per week is uh, more than 5,000 people per week. Uh, that's uh, the average because, uh, yeah, we have really concern about it. Uh, for educational, uh, for educational sectors, uh, We, yeah, who has uh, or who has been affected by the, the pandemic? We know that there are 52.8 million students uh, for formal or informal uh, education in Indonesia uh, who had potential could be hit by pandemic. Um, for formal education, there are total of 55. Point uh, five uh, million students in Indonesia who had studied from primary to high school. Uh, there are 5.3 uh, million students in early childhood 
And meanwhile, there are 7.3 uh, million students studying at various public and private university, and almost 40 of thousand students in special school and inclusive uh, school uh, had to be a potential uh, hits by uh, the pandemic. Uh, and of course, not just students affected by the pandemic, but uh, the million of teacher or lecturer like us, uh, maybe hundreds of thousand uh, school headmaster or management instructor, coach, school counselor or supervisor, they have to be uh, affected by the pandemic in uh, uh, their uh, daily life and workplace. Uh, so they must be work from home using method they never had before and furthermore, more over many limitations like uh, maybe knowledge and skill, network coverage, lack of internet expenditure and extra and extra. Uh, and as we all know that million parents have to spare uh, their time to teach, to monitor or to accompany their children learning at home completing class assignment, doing their homework, finishing their project, even keep on eye uh, during school exam. Uh, maybe trillion of rupiah has allocated by government in ensuring citizens get their right on education. Uh, hundreds of training was held for teacher, for school principal and supervisor uh, in addressing high quality learning needs of million students uh, at the country. Uh, now, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, which had, uh, had so many negative impacts, but uh, I think also had a positive impact uh, for education sector in Indonesia. Uh, this positive impact can motivate throughout difficult time uh, to continue to achieve the more advanced goal of Indonesian uh, education. As you can see in my screen, you can see that the uh, pandemic can triggering the acceleration of educational transformation. Uh, maybe many online learning applications are available around us uh, and then number of free online courses available for all season. Uh, and then uh, the emergence of unlimited creativity of teaching and learning, uh, collaboration between uh, parent and uh, teachers and application for knowledge uh, in the family by the student, by the uh, parent maybe. And uh, teachers become more familiar and uh, technology literate. Uh, every teacher in the school uh, push uh, how to uh, compromise with technology, they uh, become uh, more familiar with uh, gadget, with uh, Zoom, with internet and so on. And then internet as a source of positive information. That's how uh, I explained that a pandemic has uh, hikmah for uh, all Indonesian. Uh, actually, for especially for a teacher and a student in in, in school, uh, and then uh, student uh, when pandemic, student can be directly supervised by their parents. Uh, I think that's uh, the 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 good uh, impact uh, by pandemic, but. Uh, yeah, in the opposite, we have a little bit uh, negative impact maybe by pandemic uh, uh, to the school. We, 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 uh, we know that uh, there is no learning activity in the classroom today. Uh, in uh, elementary, uh, uh, elementary junior high school, even uh, in the university, um, and then uh, there's a resource gap, yeah? Uh, when all type of learning from home are done online, it is likely that uh, there is a gap in terms of facilities 
many student have uh, so uh, have so far rely on the educational facilities provided by school and campus and campus uh, the reason is uh, not all students uh, have adequate uh, facilities whether it's gadget internet connection or even electricity yeah moreover student uh, or teacher or lecturer uh, who live in uh, uh, Tiga T areas uh, uh, terdepan, terluar, terpencil, ya yeah, find uh, difficulties uh, to get online learning uh, support facilities, and then uh, learning process uh, feel uh, more heavier. Yeah, uh, the student feel that learning from home feels uh, tougher than before. Uh, based on many research and reports, some parents suggest that distance learning should and uh, not be limited uh, to assigning assignment. Uh, in fact, uh, many teachers did that. So maybe uh, our lecture in the university, uh, you can imagine if, uh, if uh, your every lecture or professor at this semester you, you took, uh, give you assignment every week. Every professor, every subject, uh, one assignment. How do you feel? Uh, I can say sakitnya itu di sini gitu ya. Every every professor give assignment every week. If you took uh, seven subject with seven assignment, how do you feel? Uh, can you sleep well? <laughs> can you eat with uh, excitement? Yeah. It is better if uh, the delivery of materialization is uh, also reproduced so that student can really feel like learning and are not just a given assignment. Uh, and then uh, pandemic uh, causes increased risk of harm. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I found uh, due to the UNICEF report that uh, increasing the time students learn and socialize online uh, on the internet can increase the risk of harm especially for elementary education student, uh, maybe elementary school or junior high school. Some of these risks include cyberbullying, as well as negative content spread uh, on the internet that has the potential to harm uh, children. Uh, oh, sorry, I have to play my... Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, what uh, did government do? Uh, we know that many activities carried out by involving groups of people are now starting to be limited, uh, such as going to school, working, uh, said pray or worshiping, even tour and traveling. Uh, now you cannot mudik. Yeah, <laughs> because of uh, uh, government regulation. Uh, the government has appealed to an issued regulation to work, uh, study, and worship from their homes to reduce the number of COVID uh, exposed and reduce the rate of uh, uh, spread that occurs in Indonesia. Uh, as you can uh, note that uh, Minister, Nadi, uh, Minister Nadim or Mas Menteri has issued policy concerning implementation of education in emergency coronavirus disease, which uh, provide direction that teaching and learning activities by students are carried out uh, online in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus disease. Uh, the impact experienced by Indonesia due to the uh, COVID-19 led the government to issue a new regulation which made a national examination or UN, UN in 2020 officially abolished. Uh, starting from elementary school to the high school, uh, they have been ex uh, exempted from the exam. The government uh, uh, has eliminated the national examination as a first step in reducing spread of the coronavirus and making it easier, I think, for the student. That today, uh, no examination, no national, uh, tiada, uh, tiada when they have was. They are very happy, I think. Uh, and then the policy issued by the government about uh, uh, 
prinsip uh, social distancing to all level of society even in several city in Indonesia we know that uh, PSBB PSBB uh, large scale social res uh, restriction is uh, the implemented which aim to stop uh, uh, spreading uh, uh, the virus uh, this uh, policy had a huge impact of education sector in Indonesia, I think, uh, especially on elementary and middle school level, uh, as well as upper level. And lectures continue until conditions are declared uh, conducive and safer. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, schools are closed, but the teaching and learning process must be continued so that students do not fall behind in getting lesson from uh, their, their, their teacher. Learning from home is carried out in two ways. Uh, we can say uh, uh, online and uh, offline distance learning uh, according to the availability and, uh, availability and uh, readiness of facilities and infrastructure. Online distance learning can use source taken from TVRE uh, maybe you can hear rumah belajar uh, from uh, the Ministry Education, uh, uh, TP Edukasi, uh, Belajar Digital, uh, uh, and and more. Uh, um, for school that uh, implement offline distance learning, media and learning resources can be taken from uh, television, radio, uh, self study modules, maybe and worksheet print. Uh, teaching material and teaching aids from the surrounding environment. Uh, there are so many uh, government policies uh, I can share with you, but uh, with the limitation of the time, uh, I can uh, explain all, uh, every uh, attempt from government. Um, now, uh, I can uh, share a little bit uh, information about uh, how uh, remote teaching, I, I, I call it remote teaching, uh, until now uh, that has been evaluated. Uh, many studies uh, I have been uh, explored from the internet and many journals said that uh, uh, Effective, uh, effectiveness of the online learning uh, focus on learning. The studies report uh, that uh, remote teaching does not work uh, effectively. There are so many obstacles uh, faced uh, by the student, uh, the teacher, and school management. I think uh, students do not have online learning tools. Uh, and then uh, lack of infrastructure, uh, not all area uh, where as teacher and student live are covered by the network, uh, just not the internet. I said even electricity not covered too, uh, very tragic, I think. Uh, student or parent uh, internet quotas purchasing power, uh, so uh, purchasing power of uh, internet quota uh, are limited. Not all parent or student can afford internet or uh, data quota. Moreover, uh, if they have more than one child in the family, of course, their external expenditure is, became, uh, is becoming uh, increasing. Uh, and then uh, the evaluation report that domestic uh, violence cause a psychological problem. Uh, uh, for, for, for children. Uh, student can be stressed because of the lack of interaction with teacher, friends, and the, uh, and the environment. Uh, it, could, uh, it could also be due to the pressure, due to the difficulty of online learning itself. UNICEF recorded that out of the 1,000 to 1,200 children, uh, survey respondent in Indonesia, almost 300 of them experience verbal abuse uh, during uh, online learning. Uh, you can watch on YouTube uh, uh, channel, maybe uh, how maybe someone said that is funny. Uh, uh, mom uh, hit uh, her children because of uh, 
learning uh, they found uh, difficulty of learning for their children. Uh, and then uh, parents get stressed when accompany uh, their children. Um, okay, oh, my time is okay. Uh, now, uh, how uh, we uh, uh, keep uh, our learning is uh, best in quality? Uh, realizing quality learning is the task of all components who involve and interest in education and learning in school. The teachers, students, parents, school management, government, and society uh, must be involved in an effective learning process. In the pandemic era, cooperation that has been done and with a fixed pattern, of course, must undergo change. The usual things that have been done, of course, will no longer be able to run as they should. Uh, at this time, everybody now had to be a teacher. Everybody must be a school manager, a guide uh, and counselor, teacher and evaluator, a supervisor, and many other roles. Uh, the most uh, formidable challenge is from the perspective of parents. Thus, uh, we know that parents uh, never been prepared to replace the role of a teacher or school principal or counselor. Suddenly, they have uh, to fulfill this, uh, this role. We can imagine uh, what uh, the result will be. Uh, the parent not preparing how to uh, teaching, how, how to uh, uh, accompany students with assignment. Many story of their children were stressed. On the other hand, the parents were also stressed. Uh, today, parents are expected to able to master the technology used by the teacher uh, and teaching and learning. And it's not uh, easy matter, I think. Uh, no, not, 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 not to mention, uh, their ability to access technology is not support for their children, uh, for their child learning effectively. Many difficulties were encountered in various places. Uh, and then, this is how we have to change our paradigm uh, on uh, learning or uh, pedagogy approach. We know that 21st century skill is uh, current issues uh, in uh, implementing education in Indonesia today. Uh, we know that the Industrial Revolution 4.0 uh, requires a person to have very skills that are often termed 21st century skills. Uh, there are no similarity in the division 21st century skills. Uh, yeah, various uh, writing of expert and incident reveal a very important skill for students. Yeah, maybe we, we address uh, P21 uh, proposed by uh, 4C. Uh, and then uh, Stanford and uh, I'm forget to, who said that uh, that uh, partnership uh, P twenty first proposed by Percy Stanford and also Wagner College proposed three R three uh, R three P four uh, C and there so many. Uh, the skill of the 21st century skill, uh, we can uh, uh, call it by Gerstein, that's effective oral and written communication, uh, maybe cross network collaboration and so many. Uh, that um, should be a uh, objective for education today. Now we, uh, we uh, pedagogical approach uh, is uh, an appropriate characteristic uh, for education, uh, 1.0. How about uh, 2.0? We know that andragogy, uh, andragogy is education for uh, adults. And then hetagogy, uh, uh, pedagogy, and the last cybergogy. Yeah, uh, I have to uh, summary. Um, is the last thing that... oh, okay, okay. Okay, the last, okay, the, now, the last one, uh, let's metamorphs. We have uh, to, 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 
to recognize the SQL is a SQL system uh, that everyone, everybody, every unit must be uh, changed. We have to learn now. We know that SQL as a learning organization. And then uh, the last one, keeping quality learning. Uh, Delivering effective online learning uh, in designing online learning, uh, its demand learning should not be the same as face to face uh, because online, with, there are so many limitations. Teachers required to make a simple learning plan. Online learning media for students must be easy. Uh, in the online learning process, the teacher can make many variations of learning models. The key online learning is to make learning simple, accessible, fun, and don't let students feel bored. Uh, and self-regulating uh, regulated learnings uh, and then effective uh, sorry effective online teaching and monitoring monitoring and evaluation of learning is uh, the way how we keeping quality learning is uh, in place uh, thank you I think that's uh, my presentation uh, terima kasih assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for uh, the marvelous the presentation. I think uh, this uh, presentation is very interesting. So please, all the audiences, on the participant, please uh, provide the question. Uh, the question will be open after after the keynote speaker, keynote speaker two will deliver. So from now you can start. And provide your question. Then later on, you can uh, ask directly uh, via chatting box, or you can raise hand later on. Okay. Uh, now uh, we give the next session or second session uh, to deliver the material or presentation uh, regarding the online learning in pandemic era, the opportunities and challenges. I think this one also is very interesting uh, because uh, our party, uh, the program studio or department of Islamic education also invited the uh, professor Dr. Hindra Wichaksono yeah, as uh, written in the flyer. Uh, he just uh, got the, as the teacher of the year award. Yeah, I think he will deliver the present, uh, beautiful presentation as well. Okay, the time is uh, for you, Prof. So, I, how long I have the time to present my slides? Uh, for 40, 45 minutes. 45 minutes, okay. So, I will try to share my screen right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, before before uh, you start, Prof. Uh, so I will introduce to the uh, all the participant. So the professor, uh, Doctor uh, Hendra Bijaksono, is from the Jacob University, uh, Bremen, Germany. Uh, he his bachelor degree is graduated from ITB Bandung, then second masters and also the doctor degree from Karlsruhe. Uh, University in uh, Germany, and also he has many. I uh, will okay. He has many uh, many publication as well. Okay, okay, Prof. The time is for you. Okay, thank you so much, Pak Tumin. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for the organizer, the faculty member of uh, University of Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta for the opportunities for me to share the, the experience today. And also thank you for Pak JP for the presentations before me. So Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So today I will 
uh, share my some 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 experiment experience about uh, how the industry 4.0 and also the pandemic uh, year influenced the the task of educations, especially in higher educations, which are education itself and research and transfer, or in Indonesian is pengabdian masyarakat. And then how uh, the challenges and the opportunities of uh, in during the pandemic year, especially by the implementation of uh, online learning. So I will start with, with some uh, challenge of Industry 4.0, the implication of Industry 4.0 on jobs. So you can see here, it's, it's a study uh, conducted by, I think, University of Cambridge some years ago. So what are the implications of Industry 4.0 and automation uh, on jobs? You can see on the left-hand side here are the jobs that not really influenced by or not replaced by the technologies. So you can see here like the healthcare educations, like teachers, healthcare doctors, for example, and also like engineering and management. So on the right hand side here are the um, jobs that potentially can be replaced by the technologies. Here, for example, like uh, transportation like drivers uh, because of the autonomous cars for example the productions like the manufacturing workers and um, jobs related to, to sales and customer service because of uh, for example the introduction of e-commerce for example so we don't need sales personnel and also service personnel anymore so even in the future, like lawyers can also, could also be replaced by artificial intelligence. So because of uh, the technologies right now um, in the industry 4.0, the key of industry 4.0 is actually not only the technologies, but the ecosystem. So that means we need to build the ecosystem to, in order to uh, apply the technologies to provide the technologies with the context so that it can give more benefits to the people through business and uh, also social organizational activities. So here um, also entrepreneurship is then very important to be active in the industry 4.0 ecosystems. So not just the classical uh, entrepreneurships like you can see here, like in the first uh, entrepreneurship 1.0 where uh, it's based on one man one show so people uh, did everything by themselves uh, without any collaborations and in 2.0 and 3.0 um, here there's some helps with of the technologies information and communication technologies but still uh, focus on one man one show uh, and Right now in, in the in industry 4.0, that we are required to collaborate with any anyone. So from different locations in the world. So the corporation should be global. So it's so-called global entrepreneur village. So for example, if we see um, some companies like Gojek or companies like Amazon, so there are some companies, other companies that involve in the ecosystems, the ecosystem like the payment uh, gateway, uh, the logistic, logistic companies and so on. So based on that implications on uh, jobs and also on, on the entrepreneurships. So there are some, some focus of education in order to um, keep the, the people competitive, competitive in this industry 4.0 context. So the focus is that in the technical education, for example, so we need to have a interdisciplinary approach because 
now uh, it's not enough only to work alone, work in a one uh, film. So we need to be able to uh, either to have interdisciplinary competence in ourselves, we need to have the core um, skills and also the context skills. And also we need to be able to collaborate with people from different backgrounds. And IT is, is important in this right now, including uh, tools to do the learning itself. So therefore, the adapt adaptability and um, changes so because of what is this, is constant in, in Industry 4.0 era is the changes. So we, have, we experience changes almost every day. So every, every day or every month, there are new technologies and so on. So we need to learn and update our skills. So, and also entrepreneurship is also should be the focus in the education right now because of the change leads to uncertainties and we need to be creative to, to be able to compete and to collaborate in the global villages. And also uh, we need to be able to use tools that give us the possibility of adaptive learning uh, with the with, uh, MOOC, for example. And also we need to be able to um, cope with uh, curriculum, which is very, very flexible with, for example, in Indonesia, we have this um, Merdeka Belajar, freedom of learning. So we need to be able also to face with this kind of flexibilities. So now how uh, Germany, especially the higher ed education or in university education address those challenges. So this is provide uh, the general task of university in Germany. Um, so now I focus on only on the uh, higher education of universities. So how uh, the relationship between industry and higher education. You can see here some are uh, um, written in bold, so which is not common in Indonesia. For example, the recruitment of professors, the recruitment of uh, lecturers, also from industry, especially for the applied sciences field like uh, engineering, business, economics, and so on. So usually university prefer to recruit faculty members that have some industrial experiences. And also um, university can give funding for research to universities. And also what is perhaps not really common in Indonesia is that the accreditations of study program, for example, uh, also involving industry. So not only uh, professors who review the accreditation process, but also uh, some representative from industry. So of course, uh, the relationship from, or the supply from the university to industry, of course, supply the skilled laborers, can give consulting, research transfers, the, I mean, the result of the research is then applied to the companies and also give some internships. And is that which to give you a comparison what is the dif difference between Indonesian and German lecturers? Mm -hmm. So usually the qualification required as a lecturers in Germany is at least to have doctoral degrees and some uh, some years of experiences as postdocs or experiences in industries. So, so usually at least you need to work at least five years in industries or uh, as postdoc before you can be a lecturer. And then uh, the German university prefer people who have uh, 
some interdisciplinary uh, background or be able to to work in in interdisciplinary teams and what is here uh, interesting is that the recruitment recruitment of the lecturer is done by by the user of the education service yeah not not the policy maker like the government or uh, the management but the user so that means usually there is a committee of selections that consists of uh, professors or lecturers, and then the representative from industries, some kind of external external reviewer, and also students, and also uh, some admin staffs. So because they are the people who work, who will be will directly work with mm -hmm. with the candidate. And then uh, we are free to teach and to do research any kind of topics and also um, yeah the performance evaluation is not standardized in Germany it's based on the strength and the weaknesses of each lecturer some lecturer uh, has strength in research but not in teaching for example and some has a, a strength in in teaching but not used to do research, for example. So the performance of evaluations based on the strength and weakness of each faculty member. And then um, the mobility moving from industry to academia and vice versa is possible in Germany. You can see here is some, um, is the task of faculty members in Germany. So there is a distinction between lecturer and professors. The lecturer is, they don't have to do research, but the professor has to do research and teaching both. And based on their strength and weaknesses, they can uh, choose the path, how they want to be as evaluated. So some lecturer can also do research, but it's only like 10% if, if they are interested in research. But the main task of lecturer is just uh, mostly teaching, like giving lectures, seminars, and so on. And admin, administrations, like to do, to have, uh, to get involved in the uh, committees, to do meetings, certifications, and admin things like um, writing reports and so on. And inspirations here means uh, some activities which transfer the knowledge to to the external parties, like like to, to give you know speech to to mentor students, for example, advise students and so on. So it's content as inspiration. So as professor, there's uh, also options here if. If the person is very strong in research, they can choose this path, focus on research. If, if the professor like to socialize, to do external activities, so he can choose inspiration, focus, and also he can choose teaching. And the typical one is like this, like 40% teaching, 30% research, 20% inspirations, and 10% admin. So what about uh, education? So I, I uh, quote here the hadith from Abu Daud, narrated by Abu Daud. So about education, he said, uh, because now we, uh, the, the seminar is organized by the faculty of Islamic education. So, so here, whoever travels, a path in the search of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path, the path to paradise. So this is kind of uh, modify, motivate us to search knowledge, to find the, the way uh, to the paradise. Um, So very like here, the angels lower their wings for the seeker of knowledge. That means the seeker of the knowledge will get visits from the angels. 
and the inhabitants of heaven and earth, even the fish in the depth of the water, seek uh, forgiveness for the solar. So who, the one who, who is competent in, in the knowledge, who has more knowledge, like scholars. So even fish in the depth of the water, which is very far away, seek forgiveness for him. The future of the scholar over the worshiper is like the super, superiority of the moon over the stars. So this is, that means the scholar has a higher level than uh, just a worshiper. Uh, like the size of the moon comparing to the, the stars, which is, I mean, not the literal um, size of the star, but the, the size of the star that we see. So it's quite tiny comparing to the moon, which is very large. The scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. Uh, they do not leave behind gold or silver coins, but rather they leave behind knowledge. So that means uh, the scholar is kind of continuations, uh, continue the missions of the prophets and to leave us the knowledge, not the materials. Whoever has taken hold of it, it has been given the abundant share. So this is so important, uh, the, how important seeking the knowledge because it will leverage our level. So, but we need to have some kind of method to learn, to do learning. So one of uh, framework that can be used to guide us for learning is to call curriculum. So this give you some ideas how a curriculum is developed in Germany. So usually we have uh, this in for, for the higher education, yes. So in Germany, there is a standard standardized German qualification framework and each university has its own strategy and concept. For example, some university focus on uh, economic educations, some university focus on uh, international uh, and intercultural competence. Some university focus on pure technical. And this, this, this strength of the university is quite, is very important to influence the, the curriculum. So the curriculum of a study program is based on these two uh, considerations. So the qualification framework that defined, defined by the government and the strategies of university. And then it's then der derived to, uh, to develop module or course. Usually the process like this, first everyone, every um, faculty member needs to aware about this qualification framework and also the university vision, university strategies. And then there's a team that propose some uh, curriculum, what is the learning outcomes and what is the uh, modules and so on. And then uh, the responsible person has to describe their, their module or course that they, they teach, they will, they will teach. And then there's some peer feedback yeah, from, from people who is not the team member who write the proposal. And at the end, the approval from from all of the Senate uh, member usually. And this is give example in my university. For example, the goals, specific goals of the university is these four points: yeah? academic quality, personality development, internationality. So we need to go international, and uh, qualification for professional life. So what, uh, what variables to achieve these goals? For example, for academic quality is the teaching quality itself and the curriculum study ability. So whether the curriculum is studyable, it can be studied or is too much or too, too easy, for example. And uh, personality development is both personal and social competence and internationality here can be measured 
by measuring the cultural diversity and intercultural competence of the students. And this is aligned to what the background that I uh, mentioned before that interdisciplinary competence is very important for, for now, for nowadays. So how uh, we can achieve these goals. So we have here different programs, different instruments, like uh, to assure the teaching quality, we need to, to have a standard operation procedure for a good procedure for professor recruitment, for example, and academic integrity rules, for example, plagiarism, uh, and also like cheating, for example, is no go. So it's a hard consequence for that. And then also we have uh, this choice course career system. So I will explain later. And we have uh, international mobility. So that means the, the student can also take semester abroad. And also we have here career service centers, internship program, and so on. A lot of all of instrument that developed to achieve the goals. So what is this three C concept, the choice, core, and career? So basically in our university, for the bachelor program, we require three years. And the first year is the choice. So the choice here, the student can choose one major, for example, industrial engineering, and then they need to choose the second, second major, which is, for example, computer science, psychologies, and so on. And then uh, he's, the student can still uh, change the, the major in the first year. And in the second year, the student need to decide what major they need to study. For example, they don't like the industrial engineering, they want to change to psychologies, so for example, and then they need to focus on psychologies in the second year. And the third year here is then uh, career preparations like internship thesis and uh, some specialization courses and so on. So this gives you some example of what uh, the study content to prepare this interdisciplinary interdisciplinarity. So for example, this is for industrial engineering and management. So you can see here these two, uh, so like 30 credits for the choice that related to industrial engineering and management. And here for the second major. So for example, the student can choose like uh, 15 credits of psychologies or computer science or other, where the student can potentially change to to this major. And then the whole second year should be the core, yeah, that's industrial engineering. That means if the student decide to choose or to change to psychologies, for example, they need to, to take all of the module here in the second year from the psychologies, and they need to take extra 15 credits here for uh, from, from the psychologies. And you can see here in the right side is the general courses, like math related and also language related and some thesis and specialization course and also internship. So now we can go to the learning. So it's, it's not only uh, universities, but is this in general learning process a uh, working learning process should contain at least three components, yeah? Students, materials, and lecturers. So not only that these components exist, but the relationship between those components need to correct or need to, to be good. For example, uh, in order that the students can understand the materials, the lecturer, or the teacher need to have the competence in the material that they, that he or she teaches. They need to prepare her or himself to the materials. 
and also have the good background in the materials. And second, the students should have a good relationship with the lecturer or with the teacher. So that means the personal, personal communication between, especially for the lecturer, the student and lecturer need to be very good. Need to attract the students to, um, to pay attention to the lectures. So then the, the student can understand the materials. So how uh, learning uh, process works usually, first the student collect information and then process it. Collect information can be from, from reading, from um, hearing, and also from like paying attention to, to the lectures and process information. So, and then each student usually has uh, some already some pre-knowledge some perspectives. So this new information should somehow uh, get structured in the, along with uh, other pre-knowledge in the brain of, of the students in order to then to apply the knowledge. Yeah. For example, uh, the student here have some pre-knowledge, for example, swimming pre-knowledge. And that he got, extra information about how to swim in, um, in the sea with a strong wave, for example. So then this extra strong wave, how to process with strong wave, combined with the pre-knowledge about swimming, and then the student can apply it by both uh, combining the inform new information with, with the already existing inform knowledge. So then apply knowledge and from the applying knowledge, the student get new information, get feedback from, from the environment. Okay, for example, the wave is too strong and need to somehow to change something in the method of swimming and so on. It's how uh, learning is like a close loop. The conventional way of learning like uh, at least in my school uh, some years ago, when I was in the ele elementary and prime, um, junior high school, for example, it's learning is just copying. So usually the teacher uh, read or show, explain or dictate some material exactly the same as from the source, from the book, for example. And each of the student need to have the same understanding, like copy paste from the, from the source. That is focused on more on memorizing, uh, not understanding. So the learning is just to store the information. The problem if, if, the, if the material is too much, too much materials. So what happened is that uh, it's difficult to, to get new information and we cannot apply it, it just make us uh, passive. Yeah? Not be able to process uh, the information and just accept, accept and accept. So modern way of learning is that uh, the task of, of the teaching, teacher is not, not uh, to show, just to explain and to dictate, but supporting, stimulating, insp inspiring. So the student need to be active in learning. So need to uh, have some, perhaps they have different understanding, slight different understanding, but the same, the same concept. So it, it can be illustrated here. It can have a slight difference between, between students on the understanding on the concept. But it is fine, but uh, at least it's still on the same path. So to construct this word structure, for example, from these pieces should be independently. So this is now the challenge how to, to evaluate it. So usually the learning strategies that conducted in German schools is so kind of uh, so-called sandwich. 
So the first is this is to facilitate the active learning. So first, the lecturer or the teacher points to the some explain on the some topics in general and give some some task. Yeah, input is here for some task or some questions. And then this from this task or questions, the students should reflect uh, and process individ individually. Yeah, they they need to process the information individually, not uh, not required to have the same the same uh, understanding or the same the way the same way of processing uh, for each student. And then they need to synchronize with usually the, with the peer in the group work, for example. And then the lecturer give feedback uh, after the student give some presentation, for example, or give some hand out the results. So this is kind of a sandwich. So for example, this is the role of the teacher and then the student and again the teacher, student and teacher is on like, like sandwich. Research uh, also uh, in the uh, university education is a part of education because by using the results, uh, research, we get new knowledge, we get new findings. So we need, according to Imam Malik, so we need to seek for the knowledge. Knowledge doesn't come, but you have to go to it. One of the method is to do research. Research is Basically, based on the problem, we gain new knowledge. We try to solve the problem and gain new knowledge. Whether we, which methodologies, which approach can, can use to solve the problem. And then uh, also here, according to the Muslim hadith, hadith Muslim, for him who follow a path for seeking knowledge, Allah will is for him the path of, to paradise. It's similar to uh, hadith narrated by Abu Daud. And research in university uh, in Germany is very uh, supported by different source of findings from the states and also from the public uh, bodies like ministries or public organizations and through research contract from industry, for example. So research is re required flexibility. So that means the management of research usually is very decentralized. So every lecturer has uh, authority to manage the research, the research independently, independent from study program. So usually, uh, I, I think it's not so important here. So. And also the transfer. Transfer is also important. Transfer is to transfer knowledge to the societies. Um, according to also some quotes here, uh, some hadith, uh, the best among you are those who bring greatest benefits to many others, including through the knowledge. Knowledge is not measured by how much is memorized, but how much, uh, how much it's acted on, according to Imam Shafi'i. So that means the transfer here, applying the knowledge is more important just to keep the knowledge. So in the Industry 4.0 era, so to transfer the knowledge should be not only one way, but multiple direction, not only to one direction, but multiple directions. So the concept of you know, open innovation model, uh, it's that the aim is to develop products or service collaboratively, uh, involving not only uh, research or university, but also like industries. Uh, for example, university do the research and then industry implement the product and then some consulting industry, for example, consulting companies um, do the market research, for example. So, so from research to product, market ready product, it involves different parties. 
um, for example, in to boost the this transfer in Germany, um, the German government encourage students and also lecturer to to develop startups. So they give also scholarship for the one who has great ideas for startups. Of course, this is quite competitive, so we need to have a good proposal. And also some also some ministry give funding to improve the startup culture in the university. There are some companies that I have a contact with them uh, and also involved in the process of uh, founding the startups. And the university program, like startup uh, program is integrated in the curriculum. So for example, in my university, if uh, the student has a startup ideas, they can um, somehow collect the credits, collect the credit from the startup activities. So that means the credit not only collected from the courses, but also can be from, from the startup activities. And also a research and innovation project mostly involves collaboration between universities and companies. So usually even the funding is from the government, the government give also funding to, to companies, to industry, but only usually 50 to 60% or 30 to 50%, but the funding for university like 100%, 100% of the costs spent for the research and for companies 30 to 60% of the cost spent for the research. Okay, um, how uh, the transformation during the pandemic year, so especially for education. So I, this is the fact of the school education in Germany. So in terms of all online learning or e-learning, Germany performed quite bad actually comparing to other countries. Why? Because, because for the school education, uh, the, the social socializations or to have a face-to-face -face interaction is, is in Germany is a kind of must uh, compulsory. So for example, Germany, uh, so homeschooling, for example, is not allowed in Germany because it's not good for education because uh, the socialization is missing in homeschooling. So ho homeschooling is illegal in Germany. Therefore, uh, the education system is not prepared for a kind of uh, homeschooling format. So therefore, Germany not introduce e-learning for school education only I think it's only like two weeks during the peak time of the pandemic. And then again, two weeks in the beginning of this year, two weeks last year, two weeks this year. So, so the online is not really good for school level. And according to some survey to the students for 14 to 21 years old here, the means of learning, the best means of learning is through videos instead of uh, like uh, phone call, um, voice call, for example, or podcast and so on. So videos uh, is more likely liked by, by, the, by the students. Um, yeah. For higher education, it's different story because because the the student is quite grown up, is quite uh, mature, so that means the e-learning is quite suitable for higher education, and the government also support support it. So the thing is how to make it more systematic and more structured. So in order to optimize or maximize the outputs, the impact. So what our university did is to establish a 
task force. The task force here consists of students, lecturers, IT staff, and admin staff. They they work in a team, uh, a committee that um, the task is to decide what is the best method for digital transformation and online learning, which is uh, good for all of these actors, not only for the students, but also for lecturers, for the IT staff, that, and also admin staff, which who, who enter the, the grades, uh, process the grades and so on, for example, and manage the rooms, the classes and so on. So the result of this committee is to have a standard software, standard system that includes technical support. So to have the standard is important because uh, it can save the time. So, uh, so everyone can learn the same tools. So in our case, now we use Microsoft Teams uh, for online lectures. And for online exam, we use L plus and Proofsters. So like this, this Proofster that exam can be online and also the students are required to, to show the rooms with camera and show their ID card. So, and there's also some other tools for a learning management system like Moodle or some gamifications. So not only to, to provide the tools, to provide some trainings and to, to have some kind of manual or knowledge base so that everyone can uh, consult with the knowledge base if there is some problems is quite important. And how uh, the problem of the online learning is that the students, it's quite difficult to engage the students to, to the online learning. So what are the tips for that? The first is, in the first um, session, we need to make sure all of the equipment functioning property, properly, yeah. not only from the teacher side, but also from the student side. And we need to set the rules of the game in advance. For example, the student need to turn on the camera or to, need to, to uh, write the proper name and so on. So, and we need to check, I mean, the, the teacher need to check the effectiveness of the learning process, like through asking questions to give some quizzes to the student to make sure that students still get involved in the, in the teaching. And every 20 minutes, for example, we need to change the teaching modes from presentations to games, for example, from games to quiz and so on. And we need to allocate extra time to discuss with students because a lot of students got depression because of uh, loss social contact. So we need to make it, uh, to, make, to make the student feel that there is some social context, uh, contact outside the teaching. So yes, that's me. Prof. Yeah, yes. Um, so the, for example, here, what uh, we need uh, for modern learning in terms of online teaching is just, is that not all of the materials that need to be understood by the students should we teach. So that means what we teach is only like showing the points and showing the insp inspirations. And the source uh, like detailed materials can be, can be collected from, from videos from YouTube, for example, from online uh, courses like Coursera and so on, and from, from internet sources, for example, or from other courses. So the roles of digital technologies here, learning is not to rep replace the role of the lecturer. So that means the, le the role of lecturer as, as the facilitator is not replaced by 
the technologies, the role of the technologies to improve the experience in learning. So, for example, using online quiz, gamification, virtual reality, it gives uh, learning to effect, improve the learning of effect in behaviorism. behaviorism. So that means uh, more activities or reactions and cognitivism uh, to improve the understanding in the learning we need to have a different format of teaching materials like books, uh, slides, videos, and so on. And constructivism, some, some tools, IT tools, for example, mind map, uh, and also PowerPoint can provide some kind of mind map structure of the contents. And we can also use flip classroom method to construct the knowledge of, of the students by, by they are required to present what they have learned and get feedback from the teachers and also from the other fellow students. So what will be in the future after pandemic is uh, not to have a full online learning, but to have a hybrid classroom. Because I realized that uh, some students are perform pretty bad uh, in the online learning, so they need social interactions. But also some students who prefer to do it online because it's, for them it's more comfortable to to learn at home and then like laying down uh, on the bed, for example. So hybrid learning to combine uh, classroom. So that means to broadcast the classroom so that the student can also have option to do it uh, online is would be promising in the future. So it's quite a uh, Chip also uh, using this kind of equipment, uh, microphone, which can be connected to the laptop. Uh, so camera, so it's cost around perhaps 2 million rupees in total and give, it could give uh, good quality. And also not only uh, in teaching or learning, but also in the project, research project, there's also required to to collaborate online. So therefore the project management tools, like um, what we do, what we use is Jira, for example, uh, to collaborate with companies and uh, with knowledge management tool Confluence. And we need to have a shared uh, repository. We can share the files using Google Drive, for example. And also if we want to collaborate in writing, papers, we can use Overleaf. This is uh, online collaboration tools for LaTeX. So, so the pandemic area, uh, era, pandemic year right now is a hard time. So, but there is also some uh, hikma or wisdom from it. So it give us uh, acceleration to, to develop new method, new knowledge on how to utilize the technologies for education. Uh, so a lot of people get depressed, but we need to be able to, to cope with it because uh, uh, what happened now is just, just a test and we should there with it. And of course, this, this industry 4.0 era is uh, give us constant, constant opportunity to learning, to learn. Uh, because these changes is in life, more rapid changes. So it gives us more teaching. And with it means give us much. And of course, yeah. So last conclusions, uh, good teachers cannot be replaced by technologies. 
we need to focus on the learning objectives, not the technology use. So, because the technologies is intended to improve the learning experience and not to replace the, the teachers. So if we focus on the teaching methodologies, not the technologies, it will say we'll be, we will be on the safe side because in the future, the technologies always being developed in the direction that it's easy to use, easy to operate. So we don't have to worry or afraid to use the technologies because it will more and more easy for us in the future. Okay, thank you. It was my presentation. So if you have a question, I'm happy to. The safe side because in the future, the technology Okay, give okay, it back to Tumin. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the uh, marvelous presentation. Uh, we just heard from uh, his presentation regarding uh, the online learning in digital era, the opportunities and challenges. So many kind of uh, explanation from Professor Dr. Uh, Hendra Wijaksono as well as the from Dr. Chepis of Abdul Jabbar. Now we are coming to the next session is the question and answer. So first, for the first section, uh, uh, will be given to three people first. Yeah, yeah. Before you state your question, please uh, uh, mention your name. Mention your mention your name and from where you are, then the last is a straightforward uh, from your question directly. No need to long uh, question, yeah. The first one, what is your name, then the mention from where you are, then the last is straightforward for the question. Okay, we, uh, in the chatting box, I pointed there are three, yeah? there are three questions, but no, I give uh, three people first. Uh, there is uh, one person here is from media to who media. Right. Okay. I will uh, read the question first in the chatting box. Uh, in the chatting box. Uh, okay. There is a, a question from uh, Mas Harwanto in Jepara. Uh, the question is all people around the world have faced the COVID-19 for a year and it is forced them all to change their life. One of the changes is education. One of the problems is quality of education. Now come the new problem that is the distant learning or PPG. How to have a good quality in education by having distant learning and when could the education be called of quality? So there is to Main, uh, main, main point from this uh, question. The first one is, how can uh, we make the PPG uh, distant learning, yeah? And how can the education can consider as the quality? So because the question is that mentioned specifically, so the question is uh, forward to keynote speakers. This is the first question. Then the second one is from Mbak Safira Ramadanti. Yeah. Bismillah, let I ask how to organize or design online classes so as to make learning are still effective, active and fun. Yeah. So the second question, then the last question, the last question, the last question. Is it possible to have a, a good quality of education within low cost and how to develop for abilities of 21st century by online learning with low cost. Yeah. Maybe three question is uh, forwarded directly to Kina speakers. I give uh, the time who is the beginning to answer for this question. Okay, who first? Uh, or maybe I may be uh, Dr. Chepi Sabrudin Abu Jabbar. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> maybe the third one uh, I think is uh, appropriate. Prof. Hendro can uh, answer the question. Uh, it's possible to have good quality education with a low cost. <laughs> I try to to answer the first uh, question and the second. Okay. Um, uh, I think uh, we are as uh, a teacher. Uh, no one uh, to see our kids just sitting in front of a computer screen all day uh, in the classroom or in yeah in Zoom meeting on and else. Uh, we make learning. We have to make learning uh, more fun uh, using stations, hands-on learning, and small group work. Uh, there are opportunities to connect, laugh, and uh, and play. So, uh, how can we make virtual learning or uh, online or PJJ uh, joyful and uh, joyful and and learn? This is a new thing, I think, for the teachers. Uh, how to make uh, their class more uh, more joyful, more exciting, uh, and energetic. Uh, um. There are many ways how we can uh, we can arrange online learning more uh, more fun, more active, and effective. Uh, listen, uh, when you are uh, delivering uh, 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 teaching, maybe or else, uh, listen, you are not alone. In the world of online teaching, there is uh, just too much to learn to go at uh, to, uh, uh, to go it alone. Yeah, uh, so be sure to reach out and learn from the other teacher at your school. Also, be sure uh, you to look up uh, maybe uh, online uh, uh, online resource. Yeah, uh, uh, free. Yeah. Uh, with uh, high quality uh, resources. Maybe when uh, venturing out, do so with the mindset of an explorer. Yeah, The world that you are about to explore, at least in this teacher opinion. Uh, and then uh, you have to share what you have learned to the children. Yeah. Uh, And then, um, ah, this uh, most uh, very uh, operative uh, way, I think. An on camera presence is not the only way uh, to check attendance. Yeah, uh, maybe you can, uh, you have experience, a bad experience, maybe that the lecturer or professor. Uh, uh, command you to 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 let camera on when uh, uh, during the the lessons. The fact is there is uh, uh, there are far less intrusive way to check for attendance engagement than to require an on camera presence. When teacher use Zoom, uh, for example, they can print out attendance report. Yeah. Even with the free version, with this report also showing how many minutes student uh, was in the room. Uh, but there are many other good reasons why you should think twice about requiring an on-camera presence. One, not all camera work and not all students have the ability to troubleshoot camera issues. Uh, second one, uh, not all students want their homes viewed by their classmate and or teacher. Yeah, I have uh, so many funny situation when uh, uh, my student uh, turn the camera on and I see uh, an, uh, <laughs> an annoying background uh, uh, behind uh, the student. And some students may be doing double double duty. So the Mr. Tumin may be every day doing a single or double or multitasking, multi duty uh, double double duty. Uh, one class, uh, the meeting, and others. Yeah, uh, learning and uh, yeah. 
that's all. Not, uh, and then you have to uh, uh, to remember that not all Sudan want to blast their image all over the internet. So in this uh, in this in this session, not everybody wants to show up uh, their uh, their face because uh, there are so many reasons. Yeah, and then when you are online, show uh, your face. Yeah, uh, I think you have uh, to read the report that uh, research has shown that teachers who show uh, their face are more effective than teachers who don't. Yeah, remember. And then keep your video short. Yeah, so there are some who suggest that your video should be kept on 15 minutes or less, not in one hour, two hours, maybe. Yeah, all over the time, you, you, you put your videos on and then you go away. Uh, it's not okay for your uh, <laughs> teaching profession, I think. And then uh, share the spotlight. Uh, there are so many, many ways how to, to, to make our listen more effective, active and uh, fun. Uh, I think, the uh, the question the next question about the quality uh, of uh, uh, quality how yeah about quality on uh, on uh, online uh, teaching or, or learning I think uh, uh, Defining quality is not an easy matter. Uh, definition uh, will be determined by many perspectives. Uh, uh, this perspective of, of user or maybe a student, it's different uh, about the quality, about the perspective from the, the teachers. Uh, and I think um, it could be that the definition described by the various experts are contradictory to agree in somehow in some cases. So we have to use the same standard. Uh, I can give you one uh, uh, a definition about how uh, uh, or what is the good quality of learning in online learning. I think uh, the first, uh, we have to achieve, uh, we have to make sure that the KIKD, Kompetensi Inti dan Kompetensi Dasar is uh, achieved uh, by the student. Uh, where the, the, the learning is uh, on process. And then uh, teacher and student uh, collaborative way, yeah, they learn and learning in collaborative way. And then uh, the listen or the teaching is uh, joyful and inspiring. And we have to, 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 to realize that uh, healthy, healthy, healthy learning on online learning is uh, good for the future of the student. Uh, today, uh, our student, they sit on the chair and uh, looking, uh, using your, their uh, screen more than two or three hours in a day. Yeah, maybe uh, we can uh, sum it with the, Concern, yeah, it's not good for the side for the children. I think, I think uh, that's my uh, answer. And then, how about uh, uh, it's possible to have good quality education with uh, low cost? Uh, low cost? <laughs> I think I have. Uh, so many obstacles to, to answer that. Maybe Prof. Hendro, thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. for your, your answers. Okay, now uh, we give the time for Professor Dr. Hendro to answer this question. Yes, uh, perhaps I will answer the third question first. So the problem here is the, I, according to my opinions that the quality of online learning in general cannot replace the quality of in-person uh, education. So that's the, it, we cannot compare uh, the quality of online and not online. So this is not apple to apple comparison. So, but we can compare if 
how to optimize uh, i mean to compare between different method of uh, or technologies of online learning and try to find uh, the technology that can optimize the learning experience so that means the message here is the online learning cannot replace the uh, in person learning uh, what you can do is to use the technologies to improve the uh, experience of the learning uh, of the through online or digital technologies. So with the low cost right now, uh, of course, it's kind of low cost is quite relative, but it's it's possible. Uh, but first is that we need to have a good infrastructure. So. The problem is in Indonesia, for example, we don't have really good uh, network infrastructure, uh, which is not uh, really in our hands. So it's on the government and also for, of, of the infrastructure that we have. Yeah. Um, but the functioning network is necessary for, for learning. Once we have the good quality network, we can use lower tech, lower uh, low cost technologies. We, there's a lot of uh, software there that which is free, um, which is open source and so on. But but what we need to be ready of the open source solution is that it needs more effort uh, to to apply it or to use it, comparing to the proprietary software because you need to install by yourself and then uh, see the manuals by yourself without any technical support from the from the provider from the vendors so about the hardware so i also presented some example of hardware which is it cost like only two million rupiah and it gives quite a high uh, quality videos and sound for teaching. So I then I want to add uh, the first question, but the questions uh, about the, how to have a good quality in education by having distant learning and so on. So first of all that to have a working learning process, we need to have three components that have also good interaction between them, teachers, materials, and the students. The problem with the online learning is the relationship between teacher and the students because, because it's different uh, when you have an in-person contact. So perhaps for the older students, uh, like university student, it's not really a problem. But for the elementary school students, I think online learning is not a good idea um, because it needs more intensive relationship between the teachers and the students. So in this case, uh, Online learning is just kind of um, emergency solutions. Emergency solutions here is that you, uh, we need to be actively, um, uh, the teacher need to be actively in contact, motivate uh, the, the younger students and it spend more time. So, so it's, it, it's not possible to have uh, like more than 20 students, for example, for even for online learning for, for the elementary school students. For example, in Germany, so the interaction between the teacher, so the, the class teacher and the students are four year long. So that means the grade one, two, three, and four, the student has always the same teacher. So, so that the teacher know each of the students and then know to handle them. So, and know how to facilitate the learning 
because each of these students in that age, between six to 10 years old, usually they, they have different uh, interests, different uh, uh, motivation of learning. So they need to, I mean, the teacher need to find out what is the learning, learning methodology, the best learning methodology for each, each student because it's different for each student. So in terms of, uh, it's connected to the second uh, question about the, how to make the learning still effective, active and fun in uh, online classes. So of course it's depending on the age of the students. So I can really talk about the students, which older students, the university students. So usually they need to have different kind of teaching modes, not only uh, frontal teaching, but it should be like change every 15 or 20 minutes from frontal teaching or from telling stories to then question and answer and then flip classroom and then uh, games and so on. So it needs to be changed every 20 minutes at least. And uh, it's important also to that the teacher has a context of understand the context of what they teach, the matter that they teach, uh, so that the teacher can tell stories, tell stories how how we why we need to learn this, why we need to what up what the application of the knowledge later, and it can be supported by using videos for example, and then the third is to to have some kind of interactions so feedbacks. So the feedback here can be achieved through games. There is some uh, tools like Kahoot or Mentees and so on. And then also to interact outside the teaching time. So this is also important, especially uh, the, for the student who haven't been in contact with, with other people outside the world. So it's quite important to, to always be there on the eyes of the students. So that's from my side. Okay, thank you, Prof, for uh, your answers. Uh, there is, uh, before the next section, uh, I just want to remind to all the participants, uh, there is a form of attendance that uh, had been distributed from the committee in the chatting box, please fill up this one. So uh, the next question, uh, there is one question in the channel YouTube. Uh, he asked regarding how we can inculcate the educational character or values in the context of teaching and learning by online, online learning or digital learning process. There's a question from uh, Mr. Saddam one of the lecturers in the Department of Islamic Education. Okay. Is there any question from other participants here? You can raise your hand. If you can uh, speak in English, you can speak in Bahasa, it's okay. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, Prof, maybe uh, one question regarding the uh, how we can inculcate the educational character or values to uh, the student, uh, especially in the process of online learning in or digital learning. Okay, perhaps I can try to answer it first. Yeah. Yes, um, I think to to build the character of people is not enough. I mean, it's a long process. It's not just based on the one course or one teaching. Uh, it's a process that takes years. So that means it should be developed through, not only through the online learning itself or online teaching itself, but also through the, uh, the systems the system education system, the whole education system. So for example, we need to have a education system which is really have a clear 
targets. Um, the curriculum should be clear uh, to address also the character building, not only the knowledge. And then also we need to prepare the instruments uh, to achieve the character building school. Not only, I think it's not enough to that the instrument only the teaching in class teaching, but it should be systematically, which is, uh, for example, provide a kind of opportunity for the students to do some extracurricular activities to interact with the people, uh, to interact with the different values uh, or to have, a, but stick, uh, I mean, but still stick in their, their values that they have, their ideolog ideologies, for example, I was involved in a project in Germany where uh, the student of the high school um, is faced in a situation where then there is a conflict of, of values between the values that they have and the values of the others. Because we have in Germany uh, people from different countries, different backgrounds, with different cultures, different religions, and so on. So for example, what... Uh, the character that a German or young German need to have uh, need to be and also should be educated to, to the younger generation is to, to be respectful to other values too. For example, there is a situation, a simulation where a student has a best friend, for example, and his best friend here uh, stole some 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 electronics from 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 this from the supermarket, and the student know about this about about this and what should the student do, whether to report it to the police or to keep it because it's his best friend, to keep it and and there is a different different uh, opinion. From different culture about this situation, so then they are now uh, this issue should be discussed, should be open discussed, and then should be uh, somehow these different opinions should be respected. And also, what is the important values for for each student? Some student, some Muslim student, for example, has a value that uh, to have a proper Clothing is is a must, but the other find that so it's it's annoying. For example, so this kind of different uh, values should be also addressed during the education, so that the the student can also learn there and their character also built there. Not always to teach with with the ideal case, ideal situations, because it doesn't give the opportunity to the student to learn, to develop their, their characters. There should be some con conflicts there that should be simulated. And then we, as the teacher, need to give the proper, what's the proper solution? What is the good solution for them? So that's my, for my, Okay, thank you, Prof. Maybe from uh, Dr. J.P. Safrudin regarding this question. Okay. Uh, I think uh, character education in online learning can be applied in uh, many ways uh, during the lessons. Uh, character education, maybe uh, we can be begin with discipline when it comes to learning hours because online learning, many are delayed when entering online class. Uh, maybe, so the teacher must be the role model, yeah, how uh, uh, discipline uh, their appearance on online class. And then a uh, uh, teacher can, uh, lead, uh, pray before starting the lesson. Praying before starting the lesson will apply and add to the religious character uh, of the student, I think. Uh, active, 
creative and critical in learning, uh, uh, we can apply this character in learning. The teacher uh, must uh, create learning that makes students active, creative and critical by asking questions, researching or analyzing, uh, analyzing tasks. Uh, independent and responsibility character, we can uh, uh, edu educate to the teacher by uh, applied by giving individual uh, assignment without the help of others and collected according to the task deadline. So that is the character will be formed uh, in its individual. Uh, and we have to, to, to realize that character education will not be maximized if it's not apply in everyday life, uh, in line, uh, sorry, online or uh, offline, uh, character education is uh, uh, important. And I think uh, we can uh, arrange our lesson by uh, uh, the the fun in 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 a more more attractive way. Yeah, using ice breaking and 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 else. I think that's all, Mister uh, Tumin. Okay, thank you very much. For your answer. So maybe this is the last question. Yeah, last question because uh, I see there is one brother, uh, uh, Muhaini, uh, long time I didn't see. Okay, this is the last question from you. You can shoot on your camera, maybe. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you show me on my camera? Hello. Uh, can you hear me? No, I, your I, camera I, I settle off. You. Yeah, yeah your... I, I, my camera is on. I, oh. I my camera. It's already... Okay, it's, it's okay. You, you, okay. You, you can state your question. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for the chairman who has given me the time to make a question to uh, international seminar for this afternoon. Uh, the Honorable, our presenter, uh, Professor. Uh, Richardson or Hendro Richardson, or your presentation is very good. I uh, salute with your presentation and also Mr. Chetty, Professor Chetty Sabrudin, Abdul Jabbar. Uh, also, uh, your presentation is very nice. Uh, I think uh, my first statement is uh, IT online uh, cannot replace the teacher because the teacher is very important person to educate students, especially to boil the character of students. I think this is uh, uh, Mr. Richard Sono Sartreman uh, just now. But uh, that is not uh, my question, uh, my honorable. Uh, my question is, uh, how can you help us how to make collaborate with international lecture? To do or to make or to doing the research and to publish our research to international press. That is my question. Uh, because uh, I am uh, a lecturer of State Institute of Islamic Studies. Thank you for answer and thank you for cooperation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for Mr. Mohani. Okay, I give the time for all of you to answer this question. So, so uh, I'm sorry, it was not really clear. It was quite noisy. The question was about uh, the how to publish a paper, right? And doing research, yes. For joint research or for? Doing, doing research, conducting the research. Okay. So I think uh, the general rules for Indonesia is actually, or in general, first research is about problem solving that uh, solve using um, scientific method. So what is very interesting in Indonesia is actually the context or the problem itself. So the problem itself should be somehow identified. And then from there, we need to um, find the proper research methodology. The proper research methodology here is something that we need that can be collaborate with people from the outside Indonesia. So, 
So the to publish research outputs uh, in the journal and conference usually it's not always about the 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 novelty the novelty of the approach but it can also interesting be interesting if we can somehow tell the story about the the relevance the relevance means the problem what's the problem why it's interesting to be addressed and what kind of methodology should should be used to address the problem so my uh, recommendation is or my suggestion is that the indonesian university need to focus first on the problems that they that indonesia have or the surroundings at least the surrounding has have and then from there try to formulate uh, the the problems and find uh, develop the research questions and then find the proper method proper methodologies with the collaboration with people from from other countries for example so we should based on the problem what i really don't really agree with the system right now in indonesia is that uh, that everyone or every university need to have the similar output or the same output or uh, flat rate uh, outputs so like you need to still have the same topics, the same publications, the same, uh, the same uh, indicators, and so on. So each of the university need to identify what is their unique value, the, the unique uh, selling selling value. So and this unique unique thing need to be somehow handled as a strength, and then the research topics should be around that around the strength. So that's my point of view. So in that case, we can, in, in, in the university can, uh, can be succeed to, to publish paper based on the relevance, not necessarily the novelty. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Prof. Now the time for the doctors. Okay. okay. Uh, Pak Muhaini, uh, I think uh, uh, I agree with you more and with uh, Professor Hendro that uh, a teacher uh, could not replace uh, the teacher role. And uh, the second uh, questions, I think I will. Uh, uh, doing research during a pandemic, it's not easy matter, I think. We encounter many difficulties when uh, uh, exploring the data from the field, uh, but there are so many reference uh, that uh, we can use uh, or, you, or we can adapt how to, doing, how to do a research uh, online. Uh, on the other hand, I think there are so many uh, or there are a lot of interesting terms that must and we need to be researched uh, and looking for the answer. Uh, I will answer it in a practical way. Uh, Pak Muhaini, uh, Pak Muhaini uh, let's collaborate and doing our research. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, Dr. Cepi Safrudin for your answer. Now we are coming to the last section yeah, because the time is over and limited, okay? Last but not least, I would like to thank you very much for uh, Professor Dr. Hindu Jaksana that you can uh, be able to uh, giving this uh, presentation as well as to the, uh, Dr. Chemi Sabrin Abdul Jabbar uh, to give us uh, your um, remarkable presentation. Uh, I think we all the particip participant, including the committee as well, got a lot of uh, knowledge as well as the insightful knowledge, of course, uh, so we can uh, implement it uh, directly in the academic yeah, academic institution uh, to be better uh, later on. Uh, so, thank you very much, uh, thank you very much and thank you very much for the presenter, especially Professor Richard Kono and KP. KP, thank you very much for the answer.
I'm very happy for your answer. Thank welcome, you. welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, and thank you also. Thank as well to all the participants who are joining actively in this uh, uh, seminar, yeah, international seminar. No, I give uh, the time uh, return back to the uh, master of ceremony, uh, Mbak Zida. Thank you very much, Mr. Tumin PhD, is the moderator of these sections. And finally, we step to the last agenda. And once again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dr. J.P. Sakudin Abdul Jabbar, MPD, and Mr. Professor Dr. Hendra Wicaksono for giving uh, us such informative and interest, interesting presentations. And uh, now let's ask, uh, let's close our agenda today by reciting Hamdalah together. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Hopefully this seminar will be beneficial for everyone. Amen. I'm Ananda Zida as the Master of Ceremony today and also as the Committee of this program, the apologies of the mistake when we have met. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much.